in today's video we're going to have a look at how to make a medieval style coin purse. You can see these in iconography throughout the whole medieval periods right back into the classical period. There's lots of different styles out there, there's lots of different versions. I'm making a simple one today, I don't want anything too fancy or too flash, just something functional to hold a few coins and that I can use during reenactment events. That's coming up. Uh, in this video guys we're going to take a look at how to make a historically accurate belt purse. G'day everyone my name is Ben and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear, you'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes, you'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture, you'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyse historical events, what happened, who were the key players and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you and you might want to consider subscribing. So I'm using a scrap piece of 25 millimeter leather which is approximately six or seven ounce depending for my um, American and Canadian viewers. This is going to be a fairly simple project but it adds a lot to your character and your impression. So the next thing we're going to do is just bevel up the edges. I like to do this for all of my leather projects. I think it gives it a much nicer finish. Demonstrates a little bit of pride in your work. I think it's important. Audio. Next thing that we'll do is we're going to groove in for the stitches. What this does is it allows the stitching not only to be a consistent width from the edge of your project, but also um, buries the stitching below the leather, just gives it a bit of extra lifespan. I much prefer to hand stitch my leather projects as opposed to uh, use rivets or anything like that. Now we're just going to drop some holes in for the stitching. Radio. <clears throat> so this is uh, now where we are. So. We've shaped off this end, we have punched all our holes for our stitching, this will fold over to give us our belt loop and the rest of it will get sewn onto the suede. So looking forward to that. Now there's two things we're going to do now just to finish this section off and I want this done before we go on to the next sort of stage. One we're going to do the tooling which is real simple and then we're also going to do the die and the uh, ceiling. Let's get on with that. Right, so as usual, all we do, and we're going to simply going to apply the audio. So this might take a couple of seconds. I'm simply going to use a. Can we see that? Nice uh, Celtic cross as my motif. 
in order for that to work, what I need is for the um, leather to be nice and moist. And then I'm going to strike this fairly firmly. But there it is. So we'll see what happens when we get the dye and antique on. So for my belt kit, I'm using a dark brown leather dye by a company called Maclace Leather, who are in Queensland, Australia. And for this to work really well and you get a nice even finish, what I like to do is just wet the leather down just a little bit, just and that helps to avoid some of the marks. Now you could just dye this in a like a vat of dye if you so desired. Um, what we're going to do is just apply a, uh, a leather, clear leather sealer as that's drying. And this just helps protect it from the moisture, UV light. That kind of stuff. All right, so now we're done with there. As that dries, we'll come back to that and apply some antique. Uh, now what I'm going to do, just using a pair of basic craft scissors, I'm going to cut out a piece of um, nice flexible leather. And we're going to use this for the actual bag itself. Right, so we have a nice little oval for um, our bag. Now we're just marking out some holes. And we just go over those with a simple hole punch. The next thing we're going to do is put on um, a little bit of dye and antique. So this is just going to help bring out some of the detail and then stitching and we're all done. Okay, so it comes on, don't go crazy with this stuff because it does really darken up your work. But this is really good for bringing out some detail. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have brought out the detail of the cross, but that's okay. Alrighty, so last thing we've got to do is stitch it, and we're all done. Just whipping through the stitching right now. Um, I have a very simple stitching technique. All I do is a simple running stitch uh, in one direction, and then I, I basically do the exact same in the other direction. And you come out with something which is basically a saddle stitch. I don't do what some people do, which is the whole kind of um, backstitch thing. Um, I know some people do stitching ponies and some people do, you know, all that kind of stuff, two needles. Uh, I just keep it real simple um, and it's a technique that works for me. I have tried other stuff and I, I don't find it, um, I guess, quite what I need. So there's, there's lots of techniques out there and you just need to find whatever works for you uh, because it, it, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the end result. And so how you get to that end result is, is really just down to you. Okay, so you should be able to see we're stitching away with a uh, single stitch there, uh, the um, simple running stitch. And we'll come back in a few seconds. So this is exactly the kind of thing that you're going to get on one side, on the left hand side as you're looking at it, you'll see uh, the single stitch, the, the running stitch, and you'll see the effect of the um, essentially going back around the opposite direction, creating a saddle stitch. Very, very, very strong, nice and neat, exactly what you want. Rightio, to finish off your stitching, all I do, real simple, is just uh, create a couple of knots maybe. You don't really even need to do that. 
I used a waxed linen thread so this is pretty simple just cut off the excess and I just use a lighter to singe the bottom and that's done radio so I'm just using a spare piece or like a scrap piece of leather and I've just cut that down to size and I'm just going to lace that through And then um, just tie yourself a simple little knot. And there we go. Simple little project, doesn't necessarily take that long. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.